Check out the Mac here. So, oh boy, what a move in the market. And in this video, I'll take you right on through why we should not be surprised by a move like this, right? What was causing it? Basically, why you saw it. And again, it's a one day move. Don't get too hyped up over, you know, yesterday's move, the move before that, whatever it is. So, I always show you, pan out and say, here's where we are on the hourly. Here's where we are on the daily. Here's a weekly look, right? So, you get the whole overview, right? Because this is one day and it's very important where this market stopped today and why it stopped where it stopped okay to see what's going to be happening tomorrow going into next week because don't forget what are we setting up for it's always a soap opera setting up for earnings big earnings kick off tomorrow right and so we get the big banks to tell us how things are looking okay and so and jamie Dowen, now like he's been saying you know he's at the biggest bank there is been saying great things or anything about what's happening so we'll get to hear what he has to say uh, and then I'm going for a couple other charts to watch out for and a couple of things to really watch out for uh, that if you're looking for a pullback, these would be the things that cause them. But if they don't happen, then you can forget about it. That's just the way it is. All right. I'm just trying to tell you and get you ready to go for that. Now, what, of course, kick this off or whatever. Remember, we talked about PPI. All you need to do is come in line or better and, and you're ready to go, right? After a huge sell off. Okay. And what happened? It came in line at least a month over month. Again, you have PPI core year over year as you come in higher. And you actually had job numbers actually come in hotter than expected. Like I mentioned, like less layoffs than what people were expecting, right? And less quits and stuff. And so, but the market was like, whatever, it's just about PPI. Because if PPI comes down, you should see CPI follow. That's the theory at least, right? Now, of course, what happened? Well, if you look at this right here. Well, we stopped. I'm recording this after we closed. Again, this could change by tomorrow morning because... Remember, futures trade and after hours and all that good stuff. But we stopped right there, W-shaped recovery, full W-shaped recovery, right? Completely mitigated any fair value gaps you can see, but we stopped short of that high right there on, on yesterday, okay? that Actually, where we started at yesterday, I guess I should say, if that makes more sense. And when you look at the NASDAQ, for example, that's what I'm saying, to the penny, to the penny, we mitigated all those fair, those imbalances, okay? But we didn't get up to that level. Again, that could change in after hours, could change tomorrow morning, all right? Because as you'll see, there's not a whole lot of news to derail that, okay? But looking at this right here, what are you seeing right here? Boom, a lot of liquidity down beneath if the market wants to go down and grab it after hours or tomorrow, right? If it wants to continue to move up, right? You can come down and grab that. There's a lot of internal liquidity right there. Again, set in a range, but again, we should have known. Why? Here's the NASDAQ 100 sitting on that 50. That's a big deal, right? What else? Where did money go to today, especially early on? Right there. This is the 2023 game plan I tell you guys about. The MAG7, large tech, and then the semiconductors. Why? Because semiconductors are all about AI pump. And then the MAG7, they actually make money off high interest rates. That's why they're not rate sensitive, okay? Because they carry a boatload of cash. It's usually invested, and so that's why they're just a safer bet to go. And I'll go into like some other ones in detail, and you can see it right here. Do you see any red? You see no red in the semiconductors, Max Seven, even Tesla went green today. It was red starting off our own, ended up being green. Okay, even uh, MU, which we'll get into in a minute. You know, it, it didn't matter if they even had bad news. Didn't matter. Still went green. So the large funds, they put their money somewhere, right? Well, that's where they're going to. That's what every time you've seen rate cuts get pushed back, what do they do? They move into these stocks right here now. And before we continue, guys, please hit that thumbs up and think by hitting the subscribe button if you like this kind of content, do daily updates and Saturday videos answering any questions you have. Appreciate your support. Some important talk yesterday was Apple sitting right here, right? Needs to bounce. What do they do? Look. We need an AI pump. Apple plans to overhaul entire Mac line with AI-focused N4 chips. You don't think they've known about this for a long time? Of course they have. But they wait till you get to a key level where you got to have a bounce, and there you go. And so they pop, right? And like I said yesterday, this is important because if Apple wakes up out of its slumber, and it's been in for three months now, where well, the market's been able to rally and hold on to these gains, right? Without it, imagine what? happens if this one starts to move just because of its weight all right not because it's some great company or anything else but just because of the weight it holds and you don't think the other others are going to follow up of course right and we'll get into a, a few of those i'm talking about but that's why remember they hadn't had an ai pump everything else has but i mean infrastructure stocks who build stuff has had ai pumps for god's sakes but not apple and so they bought in what 45 ai companies so all of a sudden the market goes ooh, now we got an ai pump for apple watch out okay that that's that's a great combination to move back up 
I'm just saying watch it. Now, look at NVIDIA. This, this was another one. We saw it. Got below that weekly expected move. Got to around, what was it, 8.30 a couple different times. They said, uh-uh, can't have this happen. And they've been, look at this thing, no red candles on the hourly here for the last, what, two and a half days when you saw the market. How much red was it yesterday? And why? Because, again, these keep happening. These whales keep coming in with these call sweeps. Today it was 880. I mean, and they were pushing this thing because the they were doing above the asking price to get these filled. And that thing went crazy today, as you saw. Ended up eclipsing 900 at one point in time. I mean, this thing just took off, got out of this channel. Every time people think it's dead, mm -mm, remember, this is the AI king. If this one goes down, everything goes down. I mean, everything. Microsoft's going with it. Apple's going with it, especially because the rest of these semiconductors are just riding the coattails, baby. I mean, you've seen the earnings. They don't have anywhere near the earnings that NVIDIA has been able to show, right? They just happen to say, we got some chips. Maybe halfway is decent. Maybe it's decent. But their earnings don't show anywhere near the growth that NVIDIA has shown, right? So this one, they have to keep this thing going. They have to, right? Look at Micron. This thing comes out and says, yeah, the earthquake affected us. Going to affect us, you know, negatively, mid-single-digit impact on this, this quarter coming up. And the market's like, whatever. Let's get that money put in there, baby. You're still the flavor of the month, right? And you look at the semiconductor ETF. Sitting right there on that trend line. Right, bounced multiple, multiple times, and guess what? It got a bounce, and a lot of people are selling calls on this thing. Now, you would think, oh, well, the rate cuts must be back on. No, it changed a little bit, but still 77% chance no rate cut in June. Still over 50% chance that no rate cut in July, right? It moved up a little bit, not much though. And so, you know, it wasn't about that, right? This was, this was a huge liquidity grab to move back up, and the 2023 plan reenacted, okay? Because when you look at the end of the day, Right now, the S&P still sitting in this little downward channel on, on a shorter term time frame rule when you look at it, and you need to start breaking these levels, right? If it starts breaking these levels, then you go, okay, probably heading back up, right? We're probably going to start heading back up. And so as you can see, I mean, you got your high there, there's your low, there's your high, there's your lower low, there's your lower high, right? And we came back down. And the funny thing is, we did not yesterday actually close below that previous lower low, right? I actually thought we did, but we didn't. And then all of a sudden, we gapped down this morning and pre-market, and then boom, rocket ship right on up, right? And But we did not set a higher high, right? And so basically, that's what you were looking for when you were looking at this, right? To start see if we set higher highs and higher lows, okay, on the short-term time frames, which will turn back over into the daily, and then it'll go to the weekly, and then we'll start to move back up. Or do we just move back up and just set in that range again? Right? Is that what we're going to keep doing here? With earnings season, you would think these, this is going to be the catalyst to start moving things up. Okay, If they're good, if they're bad, well, guess what? We're moving down. There's a reason why it set it right here. Right, Waiting on earnings to start tomorrow. There's a reason why this was here. There's a reason why they left us here. We'll see how they do again in aftermarket and pre-market and all that good stuff without any kind of real, real, real red folder news to do it. I mean, you, I'll show you what we got going on tomorrow. It normally doesn't totally move the markets, but we'll see. Now, when you look over at IWM, obviously this is the worst of the two as far as the way they look, just because this is super rate sensitive, right? This really needs the rate cuts, okay? And you can see it broke that trend line that goes all the way back in November. It did close right at its 50 moving average, so it's getting back above. So it's getting back above that. But boy, you got to start breaking through multiple trend lines now, which is going to act as resistance. You need to stay above that 50. And so this one was really dependent on the rate cuts. And again, it's been selling down the whole month, right? Setting at lower highs, and lower lows. And so to get a higher high, it's going to have to move by another cent and a half, I believe it is, to get back up there. And you saw it did not perform the cues. What's that tell you? Money was going towards the cues, right? The 2023 plan was not to go in to IWM, right? It was going to the MAG-7 and to semiconductors, okay? So we'll watch this one. But, you know, look, the whole setup is this tomorrow, the banks, that's what it is. And you got to watch Jamie Dimon talk. All this, most of this is pre-market. So we're going to know if they come out and they kill it and they say everything was great. People are putting money with us. People aren't struggling. Credit card was great. We're just crushing it. Well, guess what's going to happen to the market? See you later, baby. It's taking off. That's the way it is. If they come out and say, man, this looks terrible. Deposits are down. People can't pay their credit cards. Defaults are through the roof. Well, that's a whole different story. Okay. So that's what you got to watch for tomorrow. That's why this whole thing's set up like this. Now, a couple of you guys asked about HYG. I'll go HYG and junk. You can't tell the difference. But you can see they're still basically in alignment right here. There's really no divergence right here, as you can see. It's still kind of just stuck in this range right here. 
We'll watch it carefully. And again, you can pull up HYG if you want to. And HYG, for those who don't know, I mean, this is like junk bonds, right? So this is the risky stuff. And if it's going up or at least sideways, they're okay with it, right? You pull up J and K, you can't tell I changed charts, can you? I mean, it's the exact same thing here. And so just FYI, doesn't matter which one you pull up. They're both the same. I just use HYG because one of our members turned me on to it. But, you know, we'll watch it closely and see if they're like, oh, this ain't looking good. Maybe not. And again, even if this thing starts to turn south, it can take weeks right for the s&p to follow it it's just kind of giving you a warning signal so just fyi on that one now of course again for you to have a big turn down like five to ten percent you got to have these stocks be taken out back and not just handcuffed but beaten down okay i mean really hurt right now what did amazon do today set a new all-time high so it is in price discovery who knows how high it's going maybe it pulls a google ends up selling back down as soon as it sets an all-time high or just pulls the MU and just takes off to the moon, right? Or, or a, uh, AMD or any of the rest of them, okay? So again, it ain't really had, I mean, now this, I think it was the last one, right? To set the all-time high here. And so there it is. You saw what happened to the rest of them. Microsoft took off, Apple took off after they set these all-time highs. And so we'll see, uh, you know, what happens with that one. Now, the two things to watch out for is going to be the dollar. You can see it broke out of this trend line, retested it multiple times, big move up. It's stuck in this fair value gap. That's why it didn't go any higher today, just mitigating that. That is one to watch because if it breaks above that, that can be a headwind for stocks. OK, we know it. We know it well. When you look at the 10 years, I told members, hey, if this thing decides to go up, right, because right now it's also mitigating the fair value gap. It always does. But if it decides to go up this weekly fair value gap up here, right, and get into that one, which is done in the past, well, that's going to create a lot of trouble for stocks. So we'll just watch and see what happens on that. I guess a 30 year bond auction went OK. The 10 year wasn't that great yesterday. But again, 30 years, what everybody's watching is what everything's kind of based off of. So watch this one closely. If it continues to move higher, that creates a headwind, especially for small caps, especially for high beta stuff. And that's where you got to watch that max seven to see where it's going. OK, see where the money's being put because they're going to send you a signal. Now, one stock to watch. I've mentioned this before. Watch snow here is bouncing off that trend line. Uh, but also, more importantly, you know, you're starting to see it getting a little low, which always makes me a little suspicious right here. Uh, as you can see, you got uh, a price target around 185 by this company right here. And so, again, this one's been beaten down. It's one left for dead. It's a Warren Buffett stock as well. But it's got those three trend lines where it came down. It, I thought it was breaking out and then it retested. Now it's getting another bounce. We'll see if it continues. If it does, watch between 180 and 190 if money starts to roll into this one. Okay, so watch the volume. Again, tomorrow, really all you got is Michigan Consumer Sentiment. We'll see if that's going to move anything. And then a couple of Fed speakers to come out and talk there late, way later in the afternoon when this, the session is almost over. And so, again, we'll see what happens on that. They've been all over the place. But, again, they kind of sing in the same tune where it's like, we're going to be data dependent. Don't have to rush to do the cuts. And now that you're seeing the market kind of price that in, because, again, I think they look at the bond market more. Than, they don't care about the stock market. They care about the bond market. If that stays healthy, they're happy. If that, if that starts to falter, eh right what's probably going to help that too though is them coming out saying the bond market that is and risk on with all that stuff them saying we're going to look to cut how much we're running off on our balance sheet right they, they want to cut it in half what they're running off guess what the, the market's going to see that and go that's liquidity baby that's awesome they're going to slow that down that much you know and why are they doing that more or less to keep the bond market healthy right and as long as the bond market healthy everything else is going right and so it's just the way it is don't mean we were going to the moon or anything but, you know, when we stay up there in just small increments of small increments, that's what you're looking for. And it's, by the way, God, I keep saying this, it is healthy to have a three to 5% pullback. That is super, super healthy. We just went to a 10% from what was it, the end of July to the beginning of October last year already. That wasn't that long ago. And so you're going to have those three to 5%, especially you start to go through the summer and stuff and things probably slow down. And so that's not a bad thing. So just have your names ready. Have your, you know, your uh, levels and stuff you like to buy at. Follow your plan. You're going to be good to go. That's it. You know, that's, that's, that's all she wrote. So as long as liquidity is good, as long as the banks are healthy, as long as the Fed's backstopping everything underneath the sun, as long as the government's spending like drunken sailors, which I'll address Saturday as well, and Saturday's video, then, you know, things can at least stay propped up to say the least so and we just keep ai pumping baby hold on my wife almost got rid of this 
I forgot about my AI pump, my NVIDIA pump. Yeah, that's what was happening today. She almost got rid of this. She didn't see the NVIDIA written on the side. I was like, wait a minute, that's my prop. You guys like that. So anyway, hope you guys got some out of it. Again, I don't put Friday out. I don't put videos out on Friday, but I'll do the Saturday video and then Sunday to set us up for the week, which will be a fun one because we're going to have a boatload of earnings back. So anyway, have a good one, guys. See you later.